Hi, Mark Slaughter. Here to do my book review of Jasper Ford's The Air Affair. Now, I've read some fairly negative reviews on this, and I only have one thing to say to that. Bullocks! And bugger off, y'all wankers. If you don't like the concept, don't read the book. Now, for the rest of you, what I like about this is the concept. He is bringing books and fictional characters to life. He's giving them a story that they don't otherwise have. So his main character in here, Thursday Next, she fought in the Crimean War, which has been raging for 135 years between Britain and Russia, which is a little bit strange if you know anything about the Crimean War. She was a police officer, and then she ended up in special operations. Now, this is a group that has sections ranging from 1 to 33. Spec Ops 1 is Internal Affairs. Where Thursday is, she's in Spec Ops 27, Literary Detection. Which is a pretty cool concept because their role is to make sure that things don't get out of whack in books. So they pay attention to the characters, they're looking for forgers, they're looking for people who can get into the book magically somehow and rearrange the plot, change the characters, change what they do. So this is where we start in Jasper's book. And at one point, Thursday gets called to work with Spec Ops 5 on a stakeout. And the reason that she's wanted is because she is the only person that they know of who knows what the bad guy, Acheron Hades, looks like. So she goes on a stakeout with SO5. Now the problem with Acheron is that if you're too close and even whisper his name, he can hear it. He can move in and out of books. He can do a little bit of time travel. He can mess with your mind. So she goes on the stakeout and it doesn't go so well. So we then find her in the hospital recuperating. Of course, SO1, Internal Affairs, and everybody else doesn't believe her story. They all think Akron's dead. She's laying in her hospital bed, and all of a sudden this car magically appears in her hospital room. And there's a woman and a guy in the car, and the woman is screaming at Thursday saying, he didn't die. He's still alive. Take the job in Swindon. Now at this point in the book, Thursday is still in London. So she decides, you know what? I'm going to go back to Swindon. It's where she's from. It's where her family is. So the story takes her back there. She's going to take a SO27 position in Swindon. One of the great parts of this book is when she gets back home. Now, Dad was in one of the other spec op sections, and they are time travelers. And he was eradicated by the Chrono Guard because they considered him a rogue operative. So Dad kind of pops in and out of the story at weird times. Um, it's a little bit annoying, but I'm going to give Jasper some leeway because I don't know what's coming in the next books. I suspect that Dad will probably be in subsequent stories. So she gets home, mom's there, her Aunt Polly and her Uncle Mycroft. Mycroft is just an eccentric genius. So he's a really cool character. At one point he has developed what he's called a prose portal, which allows you to use his portal and go into a piece of literature. And he actually does that with his wife, Polly. Well, at one point, Acheron and his henchmen steal a character out of a Dickens novel. Not only do they kidnap this character, they kill the character. Of course, now Thursday and everybody else in Spec Ops is trying to figure out how do we deal with this guy? How are we going to get hold of Acheron when he knows when we're coming? How do we do this? And one of the things that Jasper does in here is a lot of wordplay. And some of the stories, if you've never read them, uh, you might not recognize the character, but for example, uh, there's a global corporation, which at this point is pretty much running England, called the Goliath Corporation. And one of their staff people who is involved in weapons, uh, his name is Jack Shit. Okay, that's kind of fine. You know, it's a bit contrived, 
Um, but Jasper's really just trying to play on some words and, and you know, provide a little, uh, a little humor in the story, which is good. Um, it's a bit campy at times, but that's okay. I don't mind that. So Thursday has now got to figure out how do we get hold of Akron? Well, there's a part in the book where Acheron and Jack Shit are trying to swing a deal with each other. Well, Thursday and her crew bust in on this. Acheron jumps into the book, Jane Eyre. Now, Thursday's not sure what to do with them. Interestingly enough, one of the characters in Jane Eyre is the one that figures out how to deal with Acheron. But one of the things I like about Jasper's story here is when you get into Jane Eyre, um, Thursday is wandering around. She's just like an extra character, but she's wandering around in parts where Jane Eyre is not the narrator. So it's all the stuff that happens outside of what Jane is explaining. And this is really cool because at one point she comes across a Japanese woman, uh, Mrs. Nakajima, who zips into the book from Japan as a tourist attraction. And she's got some guy in there, you know, taking photos with an icon. Um, at one point after that, uh, Thursday is talking to one of the Jane Eyre characters, Rochester. And ironically, Rochester knows Mrs. Nakajima and says, well, you know, look, running an estate in this century is no less expensive than doing it in yours. So it's kind of interesting the way that Jasper takes some of the characters, gives them their own life, um, and explain some of the backstory. Now, what happens is, you know, Thursday's in the book, there's something that happens with Acheron in the Jane Eyre book, and it alters the book. But the bottom line is, this is, this is a solid three and a half, maybe even a four star book. And if you want something different to read, I mean, how cool would that be if you could jump into your favorite stories and interact with your favorite characters? That's pretty cool. So, a thumbs up for Jasper. I hope you have a great day and keep on reading.